since is the rainy season in the Philippines. The right time to take a canoe trip up the Paksanghan River, just a hundred miles south of Manila. On arrival, it is raining heavily, but it soon stops. Many people take the scenic trip up the river, which winds its way through beautiful tropical forests and breathtaking canyons. first part of the trip, the canoes are towed upriver. Each canoe has a crew of two and carries two passengers. During the tow, local canoes pull alongside trying to sell drinks, food, or souvenirs. Since there are very few jobs in the area, there are far more boatmen than needed. The boatmen, therefore, share the job. Each day, different crews are assigned so that a boatman works only one or two days per week. People live along the shores of the lower part of the river. There are several resorts along the banks which each have their own boat crews assigned, catering to their guests. Passengers come from all corners of the world. Every day, hundreds of tourists make the trip. The rainy season is the best time to go since water levels are high. form a constant stream going up and down the river. Each individual crew makes only one trip a day most of the time, since it takes three to four hours to go up and another hour to return, not including the time taking during rest periods. All trips must be done during the daylight hours. Reaching the first shallow section, boats are cut loose from the tow. From now on, the trip relies on muscle power alone. It is hard work.
Indian civilization is left behind. Dense tropical forest lines ashore. The river winds its way through narrow gorges, alternating with deeper, calmer sections where there is enough width for the occasional ray of sunshine to reach the water surface. After more than an hour of travel, a rest stop is reached. Some passengers mistakenly believe this is the end of the journey. Instead, it is a place to stretch and an opportunity to buy some refreshments and food. But mostly it exists to give the boatman a rest. The arduous trip up river continues. The gorge is narrower and the water runs swifter. many small waterfalls which tumble down the steep sides of the gorge. The man on top of the rock is directing the traffic.
trip at a spectacular waterfall at the foot of which a lake has formed. A good stretch is necessary because many are stiff from sitting for a long time in the not so comfortable canoe seats. A big cave behind the waterfall can be reached by bamboo rafts which ferry people back and forth. Everyone on the raft gets soaking wet, however, this is one way to stay cool in the hothouse temperature of the canyon. The third trip takes only one third of the time it takes to go upriver. Since the scenery is now viewed from another perspective, it looks totally different. Swooping down the rapids is more fun than any ride at an amusement park. Too soon we are back down at the spot where the towboat is waiting to take us back to the starting point. 
It starts to rain, but no one minds since we're all soaked anyway. approached by canoes trying to sell souvenirs. This one is loaded with locally made wood carvings. Boatmen are grateful for the tips they get at the end. Sometimes they are bigger than the wages received. Except for subsisting, farming, and selling some souvenirs, the boatmen are the mainstay of the local economy. Tomorrow, another group of boatmen will take their place, and a new group of tourists will go up the river to take in the spectacular sounds and sights of a tropical jungle environment.